Okay, salam alaikum. Today we want to talk about chapter 16, carbohydrates. And we will cover some of these uh, sections in this lecture and in coming lectures. And the first section is sugars, the, their structures and stereochemistry. Now, carbohydrates <coughs> uh, are, are one of the four types of biomolecules and uh, they are polyhydroxyaldehydes or polyhydroxyketones or compounds that can be hydrolyzed to them. Now, there are three general classes of carbohydrates. We have monosaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. Now, monosaccharides are compounds that contain a single carbon group and two or more hydroxyl groups. They cannot be hydrolyzed to a simpler one. They have this general formula. But oligosaccharides, sugars linked by glycosidic bonds. Oligo from Greek, oligos means few. And polysaccharides, poly means in Greek many. Bond when many monosaccharides are bonded together uh, through the loss of one water molecule for the formation of one single bond. Now, what are some of the functions of carbohydrates? They are major energy sources, like methanol, glycogen in animals, and starch in plants. Also, oligosaccharides play a key role in processes that take place on the surface of cells, like methanol and cell, cell interactions and immune recognition. Whereas polysaccharides, they are essential structural components of several classes of organisms. For example, cellulose, for example, <coughs> cellulose, which are structural components of grass and trees, and chitin, methanol, the major component of bacterial cell wall, as we will see. Now we start with the monosaccharides, which are the building blocks of all carbohydrates. They can be polyhydroxyaldehyde or polyhydroxyketones. We have two types, aldose and ketose. Aldose monosaccharides containing an aldehyde group. Example, glyceraldehyde. Ketose monosaccharide containing a ketone group. Example, dihydroxyacetone. Now, uh, in the next figure, we will see the structure of some of these. And then again, uh, monosaccharides could be triosis, tetrosis, pentosis, hexosis, ectosis, etc. And we said the simplest are glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone. These are triosis. Hexose sugars are the most abundant in nature, whereas pentose sugars are uh, abundant uh, in the structure of RNA and DNA. Tetrose and heptose sugars play roles in photosynthesis and other metabolic pathway. Let's start with the simplest tri triosis on uh, like dihydroxyacetone. If we look at the structure of this compound, it does not contain a chiral carbon, as you can see. So it does not exist in non-superimposable mirror image forms. Whereas if we look at the <coughs> other one, the simplest carbohydrate uh, that contain chiral carbon, is called glyceraldehyde. Now, this carbon here in the middle is chiral because it is surrounded by four different groups. That's why it can exist in two forms that are mirror images of each other, but none superimposable. Now, the dashed widgets represent bond directed away from you, the viewer, and solid widgets are out of the plane of the paper. Now, we have two forms, D and L, and they differ in the position of the OH group. Lahdo. When OH on the chiral carbon is to the right in dextro, it's D, glyceraldehyde. When the OH group on the chiral carbon is to the left, it's levo, yani L, glyceraldehyde. 
steroisomerism in monosaccharides. Steroisomers are molecules that differ from each other only in their configuration. What the, uh, is configuration? Configuration refers to the three-dimensional arrangement of groups around the chiral carbon. Yani this is what I explained before, the D and L. This is called configuration. In antimers, mirror image, non-superimposable stereoisomers. And the examples D and L, glycerol dehyde. They are in antimers of each other. <clears throat> Now, the possibility of uh, stereoisomerism increases as the number of carbon atoms increase. The low 2 to the n, where n is the number of chiral carbon. So as n increases, the number of possible stereoisomers will also increase. Fisher projection. Mahdo Fisher projection refers to a two-dimensional representation of the stereochemistry of three-dimensional molecules, whereas bonds are written in two-dimensional representation showing the configuration of tetrahedral stereocenters. For example, bonds written horizontally represent bonds directed in front of the paper, whereas bonds written vertically represent bonds directed behind the paper. So horizontal in front of paper and vertical behind ish the paper. And this Fisher projection method is after the German chemist Emil Fisher who established the structures of many sugars. That's why it's called Fisher. And this is Fisher here, Fisher projection. Now, uh, this is the structure for D-glucose, lahdo. It is an aldose. And here we have D-fructose, which is a ketose. Both of them are hexoses, but the difference is in the functional group. Now, the most highly oxidized carbon uh, is written at the top and is designated number one, and then you go all the way down. Now, we have how we determine that this sugar is a D or L configuration. We look at the uh, chiral carbon with uh, the largest number. And then we look at the OH. If it is to the right, then it is D. If it is to the left, it's OH. So as you see here, how many chiral carbons we have in the glucose? One, two, three, four. Which one is the highest number of chiral carbon? This one. We look, OH to the right, D. OH to the left, L. And this is the so-called configuration. Aldotetroses. Most common sugars are aldoses rather than ketoses. They contain two chiral carbons, carbon two and carbon three, and four possible stereoisomers. Two to the power two, which is equal four possible stereoisomers. Two of them have the D configuration and two have the L configuration. It's always like this. If a sugar has uh, 50, for example, possible stereoisomers, 25 are in the D and 25 are in the L configuration. Then we come to the so-called diastereomers, which are non-superimposable, non-mirror image stereoisomers. For example, here, if we look at l and l erythrose l is the diastereomers of both D and l erythrose whereas l erythrose is the diastereomers of both D, and I will show them to you. Let's first introduce this concept called epimers. Epimers what are epimers? Stereoisomers that differ from each other in the configuration at only one chiral carbon. And an example of epimers is found here. D-erythrose and d -thryose. Let's see. Although, of course, they are the stereomers because they are not mirror images of each other. And at the same time, they are epimers. Why? Because they differ in the configuration around this chiral carbon. Bahdo here, OH, 
right? Here, OHLF. And these are the same. Then we take the erythrose and its mirror image. They are called in tumors. And then d and l and also these are a pair of inant tumors. If you have an aldo uh, pentose with three chiral carbons, which means we have two to the power three, which means eight possible stereoisomers, four D forms and four L forms, leucosis, etc. <clears throat> For example, these sugars, rather than L sugars, predominate in nature. Even for sugars, the D form predominates. It's, uh, even we talked about, this is the simplest, rhyose, then tetrose, then these are pentoses, and then we have here hexoses, six carbon. Uh, if we take, for example, D glucose and D manose, they are next to each other. Are they mirror images? No. So they are the stereomers. Now, are the epimers, we compare the configuration around chiral carbons. For example, carbon 2 here, OH, right, uh, right here, OH left. So this is a difference. Whereas the remaining chiral carbon have the same configuration. So yes, we can say D-glucose and d manose are indeed epimers because they differ only in the configuration around carbon 2. Whereas D-glucose and D-galactose are also epimers because they differ in the configuration around carbon number four here. However, D manose and D galactose are not epimers. Why? Because they differ in the configuration around two chiral carbons. Now, cyclic sugars with five or six membered rings. Now, sugars, especially those with five or six carbon atoms, exist as cyclic rather than open chain form. Cyclization of sugars take place because of interaction between functional groups at distant carbons, such as carbon-1 and carbon-5 to form cyclic hemiacetal in aldohexoses. So what is a hemiacetal? a compound that is formed by the reaction of an aldehyde with an alcohol. And when cyclization due to interaction between carbon-2 and carbon-5 results in hemiketal formation in keto, exoses. Then hemiketal is a compound that is formed by the reaction of a ketone with alcohol. Then aldehyde with alcohol بيعطيني hemiacetal, and ketone with alcohol gives me hemiketal. Now, in both cases, the carbonyl carbon becomes a new chiral center called the anomeric carbon. Let's see how cyclization occurs. Now, usually in organ chemistry, reaction between alcohol and aldehyde give me hemiacetal. Now, if the two function groups are on the same molecule, for example, a reaction between carbon number one and, and the OH group of carbon number five, the oxygen, you see the action even between the oxygen here act as a nucleophile attacks the carbonyl carbon and since there is a free rotation around the this uh, this aldehyde group then we have two possibilities that oh when cyclization occur oh is down as you can see this will give me alpha d glucose and it could be also up and this will give me D beta D glucose. So now these are called Howarth projection formulas. And these are Fisher projection formulas, as we said. So alpha D glucose in both representation as well as beta D glucose. Now the new the newly formed carbon is chiral and is called the anomeric carbon number one. It's usually given uh, number one in counting. So the, the Fisher formula, D-glucose, has four chiral centers. In the Howard, D-glucose have 
five chiral carbons, remember. Now, what is the relationship between alpha and beta? They are called anomers. So what are anomers? Are one of the possible stereoisomers formed when sugar assumes the cyclic form, designated alpha and beta. And here, this is alpha, this is beta. What, we, what is the relation between them? They are called anomers. Now, in the Howard projection formulas, cyclic structures are shown in perspective drawings as planar five or six membered rings viewed nearly edge on. Pardon, Fendi, Fiora knows these are cyclic sugar with a five membered ring. Rings are very nearly planar. And pyranose, cyclic form of a sugar containing six membered ring. <clears throat> and usually these exist in solution in the chair conformation. Again, we have here the designation beta means that OH on the anomeric carbon is cis to the terminal. And alpha means that it is trans. I will show this to you as we go. Even a six-membered ring is called pyranose relative to compound called pyran. And the five-membered ring, <coughs> furanose, relative to compound called furan. And the, the, the Howard, Howard is uh, preferred by biochemists and the chair conformation is preferred by organic chemists. Now again, let's look at the cyclization of a glucose another time. Even this is the fissure, Bahdu. And here we start, we, we draw it in this way for cyclization to occur. Then oxygen will attack here and two forms are possible. Bahdu, the alpha anomer and the beta anomer. Lahdu OH and CH2OH here, they are in trans relation. So this is alpha. When OH and CH2OH in carbon 6 are in cis position, this produces the beta anomer. <clears throat> then we have alpha, we have beta. And the two forms are possible, as I said, because aldehyde group has rotational freedom here around carbon 1, carbon 2 bond. That's why anomers are possible. And remember, alpha-D-glucose is the most prevalent in biochemistry. Again, cyclization. Now, let's compare between Fisher, uh, Howard, and abbreviated Howard. Here. This is the fissure. Lahdo, any OH group that is right in the fissure becomes down in Howard. And any OH group that is left in, Howard, in fissure becomes up in Howard. <clears throat> Remember this. So all the groups here that, that are on the right, they become all down. You see, carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3 up, carbon 4 down, and so on. So this is, uh, these are the alpha and beta D-glucose, as you can see in both Fisher and Howard. Also, we have a five-membered uh, ring uh, sugar called ribose. In Fisher, also uh, in Howard, OH left beta D ribose and as we said the ribose is important in the structure of DNA and RNA. What are some reactions of monosaccharides? Redox reactions of simple sugars, pathoxidation oxidation and reduction uh, reactions of sugars they play key roles in biochemistry as we will see. Oxidation of sugars provides energy for organisms to carry out their life processes. And the highest yield of energy from hydrocarbon occurs when sugars are completely oxidized to CO2 and water 
in aerobic processes. Now, several oxidation reaction of sugars are of some importance in, in lab practice because they can be used to identify sugars. Aldehyde groups can be oxidized to give the carboxyl group. And that is characteristic of acids. And this reaction is the basis the test for the presence of aldoses. It is a test for reducing sugar. Lahdo. Aldoses are reducing sugars that contain the free carbonyl group and can react with an oxidizing agent. Okay, now. Oxidation of a cyclic hemiacetal form gives a lactone, which is a cyclic ester linking the carboxyl group and one of the sugar alcohols. Lahdu, uh, we have two types of reagent used in the lab to detect the presence of reducing sugars. Lahdu. First is those uh, uh, Tollens reagent, Hadahua Tollens reagent, which uses the silver ammonia complex Ag and H3 by 2 plus as the oxidizing agent. And what the results? A silver mirror is produced, as we will see. Then here, the Mahakena Tollens reagent, IU, if anomeric carbons are involved in a glycosidic linkage, the result will be negative in the Tollens reagent test. If another anomeric carbon is not bonded and it's free, the result will be positive and free silver metal is deposited on the wall of the test tube, as you see here, as a result of the Ag plus in the complex being reduced to the free silver metal. I think this is called silver mirror, produced by an aldehyde. And uh, this results after the addition of Tollens reagent to an aldehyde. And this is a positive test for reducing sugars. We can say that all monosaccharides and disaccharides are reducing sugars except uh, sucrose, as we will see. Now, when the carbonyl group of a sugar, ah, in addition to oxidized sugar, there are some important reduced sugars. Uh, reduced sugars, lahdu, like in the in this example here, a hydrogen atom is substituted for one of the hydroxyl groups of the sugar. In uh, this uh, compound called l fucose lahdu, which is found in the carbohydrate portion of some oligo, in some of uh, found in, in oligo saccharides, and in some glycoproteins, including the ABO blood group antigens. Then, the, the reference is beta L-galactose. Now, we, if you replace this oxygen with hydrogen, then it becomes, this is called a reduced sugar. And the same, if you have here a ribose, and in position two here, you replace the oxygen with hydrogen, then you have, uh, this is called a reduced sugar. So these two are examples of reduced sugars. In addition, <coughs> when the carbonyl group <coughs> of a sugar like methylene desorbos is reduced to a hydroxyl group, the resulting compound is called alditol. For example, desorbose becomes desorbitol. Lahdo. However, desilolose, if you reduce this carbonyl group, it becomes desilotol. And these are uh, have commercial importance as sweeteners in sugarless chewing gum and candy. So these two 
desorbitol and desilotol are artificial sweeteners. <clears throat> Sugar esters and ethers. What are the some important esterification reactions of sugars? Now, hydroxyl groups of sugars behave exactly like other alcohols. They can react with acids and derivatives of acids to form esters, uh, phosphate esters. They are intermediates in the breakdown of carbohydrates to provide energy, as we will see, formed by transfer of a phosphate group from ATP to give the phosphorylated sugar ADP. You see here the formation of phosphate ester of glucose, even beta D glucose plus a molecule called ATP. Uh, by the way, ATP is the phosphate group donor. ATP is the phosphate group donor. The enzyme Bahdu specifies the interaction with this CH2OH on carbon 6, with oxygen on carbon 6, and the enzyme is called hexokinase to form the beta D glucose exosphate plus ADP. And when we talk about metabolism, we will see this reaction. Formation of a glycosidic bond. Now, what is a glycoside? It's a compound in which a compound from one hemiacetal carbon reacts with an alcohol to give a full acetal. Now, resulting bond is called a glycosidic bond. This is not an ether. No. Fur fur furanocytes, glycosides involving furanose, yani five-member ring, will pyranocytes, glycosides involving a pyranose, six-member ring. If you look at this, uh, an example of formation of a glycoside between a hemiacetal alpha-D-glucopyranose plus methyl alcohol to form this full acetal called methyl alpha-D-glucopyranoside, this is a glycoside. And this is the glycosidic bond. Even a glycosidic bond is a bond between a sugar and another molecule. Any bond between a sugar and another molecule is known as a glycoside. Now, the, the glycosidic bonds between monosaccharides units are the bases for the formation of oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. Remember this. Formation of glycosidic bonds. Now, as I said, you know, uh, these are the bases for the formation of oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. These uh, glycosidic linkages take many forms. Now, a numeric carbon of one sugar can be bonded to any one of the OH groups on the second sugar to form an alpha or beta glycosidic linkage. Lahdu here. What is the notation of the linkage specifies? A numeric form of the sugar that is involved in the bond. And carbon atoms of the two sugars that are linked. As we will see, methylene. Two different disaccharides of alpha D glucose. Lahdu here. In this, you see uh, two different types of bonds here. Bahdo, this is uh, carbon one, two, three, four on this monosaccharide. And in this one, it is one, one carbon one here. So the bond is one, four. Then the carbon between one and four, and it, the type is alpha. So it's alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. Now, if the, if the glycosidic bond between carbon 1 and carbon 6 here, so it's called alpha 1,6 uh, 
glycosidic bond. And uh, usually this glycosidic bond occurs at a branch point, the alpha-1,6. Another possibility of a glycosidic bond, this time between a two beta D-glucose molecules, lahdu. Lahdu, the, the bond is between carbon uh, one and carbon one, and it is, its type is beta, so it's beta, beta, because both of them, and one, one glycosidic bond, so it is lahdu, this is carbon one of this monosaccharide, and this is carbon one of this monosaccharide. So that's why it's and its type is beta. So it's beta one one linkage. As you can see. Now variation in glycosidic linkage lead to the formation of linear and branch chain polymers. Now if internal monosaccharide res residues that are incorporated in a polysaccharide form only two glycosidic bonds, the polymer will be linear. Now, some internal residue can form three glycosidic bonds, to, uh, leading to the formation of a branch chain structures. So let's uh, look at this. Doctor, Doctor, عشان بس باقي المحاضرة أربع دقائق وهيك فيعني لو بآخر دقيقة تعطينا المجال نسأل. آه إيش؟ آه دكتور عشان المحاضرة راح تخلص كمان أربع دقائق لو في مجال نسأل بآخر دقيقتين. آه آه على طول. هلا هلا بعطيكم المجال. أوكي إذا هون if we look at this figure. This is the last figure we want to talk about. It shows us linear and branch chain polymers of alpha-D glucose. Here, notice that this is linear. Uh, all the types of linkages are alpha-1,4. So in linear forms, we have alpha-1,4. Lahdo, the branch chain polymer occurs in amylopectin and glycogen, etc. Lahdo, the linear form, again, all the glycosidic bonds are alpha-1,4. But when we want to make a branch, it becomes alpha-1,6. Then this is a branch point. This is a second branch point. So as you can see here, uh, remember that always alpha-1,6 occur at the branch point, whereas all other glycosidic bonds along the chain are of the type called alpha one four. Okay, let's see. Uh, keep the the rest for uh, questions. Ah, doctor, the exam will be in chapter. I have chapter six. Or how? 